Okay, we're back to talk about uh, when to build a systems map. Um, so in the last video, we talked about what exactly a map is. Uh, we looked at it as a, uh, a representation, a visual representation of a system, trying to understand the elements, the interrelationships, and uh, represent that um, so that we can better understand it uh, collectively. So when should we actually build a, a systems map? Maybe we don't always need one. Um, there are certain times, particularly when we're working um, in groups, um, you know, a systems map is not a, a solution. It's not really the outcome that we should be focusing on. It's a lot the process we go through and constructing it um, together and um, negotiating our understandings of the system that is really important here. Because um, if you think about it, most problems uh, with systems um, and our incapacity to change them stem from our different perspectives on that system, uh, right? And um, if we could come to a shared understanding of it, then we would be able to act, we'd have, we'd be able to, that would be the foundation for collective action, right? So that's what the, the, this platform of a systems map is quite often most useful for as a process um, for people to discuss their perspectives on all of this and to come to that shared understanding. And then it's a framework for them to um, take collective action. Um, rather than seeing this as a fixed point kind of solution, I'm going to get a systems map and that's going to solve all my problems. I'll have this objective view of the system and I'll be able to show everyone else and um, I'll have the right answer or we'll have the right answer. That's not the way it is. You never have that in a complex system. Um, so just to keep that in mind, um, but here are some pointers. Um, when, when and why to build a systems map? Uh, when we want to gain an, a deeper understanding of the context and identify gaps in our understanding of the system, right? So systems analysis is going to help us um, better understand. As we go through the process of constructing this systems map, uh, we will be doing uh, research um, into uh, this system. What are the elements? What are the interrelationships? And that is going to help us um, better understand, gain a deeper understanding of this system um, how it works and so forth. So um, it's a framework for us to collectively learn about the way the system works. Uh, we would also want to construct a map where we want to try and identify leverage points. Um, that's quite often what people are doing in the context or why they're doing this in the context of systems change. They want to get this representation and then they can see, okay, something's um, going on here or over here, or there's something not happening here or something very interesting here, or we have been focusing all our energy over there, but let's, that's not working. So let's look what's going over here, what's going on over here. And uh, over here, this may be a very connected person or, or whatever it is. That's a high leverage point. That's a point where I could into, we could intervene in that system and make big changes. Um, so that's uh, one thing. The first one was to understand the structure, deep understanding of the structure of the system and interrelationships. Uh, second is to find leverage points uh, potentially in that system. We may also want to uh, bring diverse stakeholders together to co-create a shared understanding of the system. Uh, that was my first point, And I think that's the most important one actually in the context of systems change and systems innovation. I've mentioned it a couple of times. Uh, well, we want to mitigate the risk of unintended consequences um, of an action and reduce the likelihood that we will uh, create superficial solutions. Um, so, you know, one, one, one point that people make about analytical thinking and not having this um, holistic view of the system is that we can do something over here and uh, not know the effects that it's having over here or over here or over there. Um, and having a holistic representation, so that's another aspect of a systems map, it gives us a holistic view of the system, uh, hopefully. Uh, and when we have that, we can say, okay, if we do something here, what are the potential consequences of that rippling across the system and on the other elements in that system? And that can greatly help you to identify um, unintended consequences that maybe were um, occurring from your previous actions or may occur from an intervention that you're gonna do um, in the future. So that's a, a fourth point, um, looking out, helping us to um, move away from um, making kind of blind interventions on specific single point areas, not understanding what's going on in the rest of the system and creating unintended consequences and not just damaging potentially the rest of that system, but also undermining what we're doing potentially, right? Be focusing a lot of energy here. Um, but if we're doing something that's affecting this over here and this is connected back to that, then um, 
you know, we're going to get some kind of loop that's going on and all our best endeavors over here are actually getting wasted because of that um, unintended consequence. Okay. Um, it may be when we want to design a solution, uh, but it's working in unexpected or counterintuitive ways. Uh, we want to understand it better. So that's kind of a similar point, right? Um, that we actually want to understand what's the full set of effects of we've been doing this here or this over here. Um, we've been trying to, um, you know, improve poverty in, in, in wherever it is, um, Bangladesh. And we've been doing all this. Um, and when we draw this map, we can start to see, oh, that's affecting that and that's affecting that. Um, it's not working because, um, you know, we haven't um, something about food, right? Maybe this food system over here. Um, we haven't been looking at how this affects that, um, you know, people's time, uh, the time the students or whatever they need um, when they should be working the fields and they're not getting enough income or whatever it is. And so they're not getting enough food. So actually all our best endeavors over here are not really working because um, of that set of interrelated factors. And we need to now, this gets to leverage points. You might need to go and do something over here in the food system or in the financial system or political system or whatever other element in this system far over here that would lead to changes here, that would lead to changes here, and that would give us much higher leverage that would actually unblock us um, in our change initiative. So those are just uh, four or five points about why and when we'd want to build um, the systems map and the importance um, of doing this.